Hello Internet, this is Ben with another Mysterious Space Update. As you can already probably tell, it's going to be a little bit different. So, a long time ago, when I was doing like initial videos, um, I showed like a bit of code just briefly while I was showing the rest of the game and, and kind of apologized for it. It's like, yeah, sorry, you guys don't want to see this. And some people commented, no, we love, we love seeing the code. That's so interesting. Um, that is cool. I think it's great that people like seeing the code, but I just couldn't help but think that if I did a whole thing of me just like coding stuff, that that would be like the most boring thing in the world. Um, but I thought I would go ahead and give it a try. Um, I was talking to a guy recently um, who said that during the Ludum Dare competitions, you're like encouraged to live stream your code, and that's like a thing people are doing. And I was just like, oh, that's that's absurd. But fine, okay, I'll give it a try. People told me before they were interested. I'm hearing now. Okay, let, let's do it. So that's what this is. Uh, I do have a specific goal, which will hopefully make this a little better. Let me, um, yeah, so these graphics. So uh, a couple days ago, Thursday, um, I was. Uh, talking with DDR Kirby ISQ, we were making a song online. I shouldn't say we. He was making a song. I was watching him like use Fruity Loops like a god. I don't understand how he... He just like knows the sound he wants and knows how to make it happen. And that is the thing that I utterly lack. I have tried messing with Fruity Loops before. Anyway, he makes amazing music. The Mining World song just got me so excited. I don't know, like some combination of the mood I was in that day plus how good this song came out. I mean, all his songs are, are great, but this one was just like so good. I, I can't, I don't even know why. It was, it's so, so I have, I don't have it yet, sadly. He's doing a little more editing. Um, so I'm not, otherwise I would, I would really think about playing it for you guys um, in the background. I don't know if it would pick up properly. Anyway, I, it, it's not an issue because I don't have it, so I can't play it for you even if I wanted. Um, but I was inspired to, um, I got ahead of myself. The music he was making is for the mining worlds. Um, I, I had mentioned uh, the previous week when we made uh, a different song, uh, the Sector Map song. I mentioned, um, you know, the mining world still needs a song. The uh, rocky, barren, moon-like worlds need a song. And, and he was like, oh, mining world, that sounds interesting. I could do some, you know, uh, mechanical sounds and all this other stuff. And I guess he had some sounds in mind that he wanted to try. So we made the mining world music. He made the Mining World music. I gave little feedback, which is mostly, that sounds really good. And, or, <laughs> you know, sometimes, like, the volume of things isn't right, but, like, I know, because we've done this a few times, he's going to add, like, a million more layers of instruments and tweak the volume of everything. So, like, it's not even worth, like, even if I don't like it right now, I, I know it's going to come out better, uh, you know, in, like, 30 minutes' time. It's just going to be totally different. So, so that's what happens. So I either say it's amazing or I wait because it's too early and I know it's going to become amazing. Um, <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'm like, can we make that a little quieter or whatever, but um, no, it's great. It's, it's, it's super great. And so I was inspired to then make more music for the, or sorry, to make graphics for the mining worlds because I was like, this music is, is like the levels are not worthy of the music. You know, like the, they're, they're mining worlds, they're called mining worlds, but they're so desolate looking. I mean, yeah, you get how it's a mining world, I guess. You've got those vertical shafts, but there's nothing on them to really give them the industrial feel that the music is, is going to convey. So I wanted to make graphics for the mining world, and that is what I have done, but they're not in the game yet. So that's what I'm going to do right now while you watch, is put these graphics into the game. So I started to record a little bit in advance and ran into a stupid issue and realized that if I run into stupid issues like that, again, I should just pause the video and fix them <laughs> rather than like playing it. Um, I don't want to have to deal with editing software for videos if I don't have to, because all I have is the Windows editor, which is terrible uh, to try and use. So anyway, um, so I thought I'd start over again. So I have a little bit of progress, and that progress is that the game is now loading the graphics. It's still not doing anything with them. So I have this crazy enum that, that holds all the enumerated type, whatever, that holds all the graphics, um, which I then add the graphics to. And I used to have, where where is this now, uh, song, yeah, play song, what can we, no, okay, sorry, thinking aloud, all right, so yes, yeah, so here we go, like for sounds and songs, they're just constant ints, um, indexing in a, an array uh, of sounds. And I used to have that for graphics, but I add graphics so often that like, you know, it was convenient that I could add them at the end now, but imagine if I wanted to add one in the middle. So, I mean, as for comparison, if I wanted to add a new laser sound, we would call it public constant sound laser six. Well, that needs to be number 19. Well, that means this needs to be 20. 
21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and I'd go down the line like this, updating them. And that very quickly became tedious and annoying. Um, faster than hitting Control Z. Uh, for, for graphics particularly, because I add graphics much more often than I add new sounds. Although I should be adding more sounds more often, I think not all the enemies have death noises, which is unfortunate. And I need to rename these because I try to keep... I want every creature to have a unique explosion noise, and initially I wasn't thinking I was going to do that, so now I need these to be like explode, name the monster, uh, as I have started doing. Anyway, um, so I don't add enough sounds that it bothers me to add the, the you know, to change all the numbers, but for adding, I was touching my monitor there, as if you can see me. Anyway, if you wanted, you know, if I wanted to do that for graphics, though, I mean, I have so many more graphics that renumbering them was just such a pain. Um, so I put them into an enumeration. I don't know. So, like, weird things like this, you're going to see, like, these bizarre inconsistencies. And probably in most cases, you won't even notice unless I bring it up, as I have done now, like, highlighting highlighting my own foolishness or whatever you want to say. Um, I don't know. You know, at the same time, no, I feel like, I don't know. I've been coding for a long time, and I feel like I'm pretty good at it. But I also recognize that I'm not, like, super great at it. Like, there's definitely some mistakes made. And I'm sure there are mistakes in this code. And so I'm a little embarrassed showing it off for that reason. Like, I don't know. But at the same time, I haven't run into issues. Like, as a solo project, I'm the only one that has to deal with this code. It's been amazing. Like, I feel like this is cleaner code than I have done for other games, for sure. Um, but it, it has issues. <laughs> Without a doubt, it has issues. I will... No, no question there. Um, anyway... Uh, yeah, like adding the graphics, I kind of talked about this before, and that's been lost now in the previous video. Uh, I'm using Monogame to make this game. I have mentioned it before. It's a open source library based on XNA, which is no longer maintained. That was made by Microsoft, and it was, my understanding, primarily meant for making Xbox games, but I, I think it was intended to be kind of cross-platform between like a PC and Xbox, which is they're basically both Windows, so you know, calling it cross-platform is almost cheating. Mono game, which has now been taken over by the open source community, they were like, hey, XNA, that's been abandoned. Okay, we'll make our own implementation of it, and we'll call it mono game. Um, it is truly cross-platform. You can, I'm pretty sure you can even do stuff on like the PSP if I wanted. I could make a PSP version. Not that I, this game isn't even well suited for it. I could definitely do uh, mobile phones of various types, including Windows. Uh, which I have a Windows phone because I'm stupid, because I program in Windows. Windows, I know it's unpopular among programmers, I feel like. I think Linux is not, I, I do not like using Linux. I really like Windows. I, I've always liked, I know, I don't know, I grew up with like DOS and I hated Windows 95 when it first came out, of course, everyone did, I guess. Um, but anyway, so I don't know, I've just stuck with, with PCs and Windows for whatever reason. But anyway, I bought a Windows phone thinking I would program games for the and I haven't, and then a Windows phone is a terrible mistake, never buy one. <laughs> There's just nothing for it is the problem. I mean, the phone itself is fine. Um, there's just no apps. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, so uh, mono game, super cross-platform. One day, I really need to make a, a version for Linux. That's definitely going to be a big push once I get everything done for Steam, all the legal work, and, and like, once it's on Steam, I just know the demand is going to be greater to make a Linux version, and, and then I really will have to. I would like to make a Mac version, because Mono Game says, hey, it's pretty easy to, you know, compile for Mac as well. The biggest problem there is I do not have a Mac, and as much as I'm having fun coding this game, like, I would either have to borrow a Mac from a friend, or try and buy a super cheap Mac, because I'm not going to use one. I haven't used, like, I remember Mac OS 7 and 8 and 9, you know, before they, they they went over to the Linux side. I mean, that was the last time I really understood how to use a Mac. I remember, like, HyperCard and ResEdit and all that super old cool stuff. I'm hoping that someone watching is like, oh, I remember those days. This is me being an old man. Um, at 30, I'm not even that old. Anyway, so let's keep coding this thing. I rambled quite enough. we got to put these graphics in. So... The first thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure that every time I play, every single planet is a um, mining world, because otherwise I will never play mining worlds. I need to test mining worlds. So here it is, level seed. And I think I actually have code now that's going to wreck that. I think it's called type mining. Because the code... I've changed things. So in the last release, 0.6.5, I made it so that when it's generating the little uh, solar system or, or whatever you want to call it, I don't even, it's not, uh, sector, galaxy, I don't know. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's whatever it is. It's a video game. I haven't firmly decided what that is. I, each thing you're visiting is a solar system, I suppose, at the very least. Um, anyway, as it generates all those, it makes sure that the planet types are distinct every time. So let's just see. We can try. I think doing this, it's going to freeze up in an infinite loop, but let's find out. If it doesn't, then awesome. My code is better than I thought. That's not going to be the case. It's, we'll see. Um, mining. Yep, it's locked up now. Okay, stop. So whatever calls this excluded types, uh, where, no. Uh, there's something that makes new empty space. Mm, that would be in sector, the sector class. There's a little bit of code that goes through. Oh, yeah. Ooh, if your name is Zelda, something funny happens. That's been in there for a while. It's even documented. I love. So I used to worry about the change log. I'm gonna try and look at the same time. I used to worry about the change log that any like hidden thing I added, um, you know, I I couldn't add a hidden thing because I wanted to document it in the change log for my own sake. And um, excluded types. That's what's doing it. It's the excluded types. Okay, so let's 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 do. The danger is always forgetting. The danger is always not remembering to get rid of this uh, later. If the game debug, then we'll just do something else. Um, so yeah, I, I was just worried that putting things in the change log meant I couldn't have any secrets anymore. I think that's still kind of going to eventually be true. Um, but right now, with so few people playing, although I'm surprised at the number of people who are following the game, um, I just don't think it's as much of a problem. Anyway, so let's try this again. No, really? You're not supposed to... So I was hoping... Oh, because I didn't put it in debugging mode. That's my own fault. Um, gotta do the Konami code for that. Anyway, I'm gonna have to like remove all this crazy code at some point, but. Mining, there we go. So now these are all mining worlds. All right, let's just save and quit. And you know what, yeah, I'm just gonna remove all this code. I don't, I don't want that, I'm gonna forget about it. I don't know the best way to do that, of like adding some way for me to force. I would just need to make a whole bunch of new code that says, hey, if, if there's a forced type Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do that. Let's, let's, I'm going to do that right now. So, public, what are these? Are these just integers? Yeah, public in forced level type. So normally it would be negative one, but let's set it to level mining. And that would be used for debugging purposes. I should really put it elsewhere. I should put it on the game object because that's where I keep. Um, there's like a couple other cheaty settings that, if you wanted to do modding, I guess you could. I don't. I don't. I know nothing about modding, um, which I kind of am a little sad about because if people wanted to mod the game, I think that would be super awesome. Um, I just don't know how to. Uh, there we go. So these are kind of, and this is now 6.6, .6, and there's not a proper release date for it. It doesn't matter, we'll just leave it. Anyway, um, yeah, I just don't know how to make the game conducive to modding. I'm sure having the code available like this helps, like you seeing, hey, there's an always invulnerable flag? Uh, <laughs> there is. If you could find a way to mod to set that true, there's currently no way in, in the code. It's just for debugging. For deb... Uh, I forget that it does that. For debugging purposes. Debugging mode actually should not be called debugging mode. That Well, it, I called that in the game. That's fine. I was going to rename it. But anyway, so let's go back then to the level C and say, if the game forced level type isn't negative 1, then we'll do this, the game forced level type. Some people probably care about having more curly braces than I do. All right. And then we would say, 
I guess actually we should do it there. Let's do it there. Then yeah, then we yeah 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 yeah. This is a much better, much more reasonable place to put it. Then type equals that. Else we're gonna do this whole funny do loop that tries and excludes and everything else. Okay, good. Aren't you glad that you and I sat together to do this? If it's not negative one, uh, is there? Where are the level types? Do I have like type none or something? Type empty space has its own special thing. Actually, so I should not use negative one. Um, public constant type. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna say none and make it negative some silly number. Uh, level seed. If it is not level type, I guess we should say type random. Let's do. Let's do this. Let's do this. If it's if it's a random type, then pick your random type. No, because it's called force level type. I don't know. We'll, we'll just do force level type is type none. Yes, that's semantic. We like that. Force level type is type none. Okay. So this would ordinarily, okay, type none is what we would want. Okay, so let's try I'm going to make a new, a new game and make sure this works. So good. This will be useful for debugging. Because there are other times when I need to do this, and now that I have changed the plans to work, yeah, I was going to run into all these problems eventually. Desert. It didn't work. Why didn't you work? Do you hate me? The, it might be... Hmm. Huh. Unreachable code. Does not equal type nut. Yes, 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 yes. So I had it reverse right. It says, oh, that's unreachable. Well, whatever. Don't complain about that. I'm sure there's a special annotation I can add that says don't complain about things, but it's fine. All right. Mining three. Good. Now we have mining worlds. They have this, like, super exciting music that they won't have anymore. So these are the mining worlds. If you haven't seen them, let me turn down this music. First of all, this background is supposed to go, like, all the way up. It shouldn't be jaggy like that. But the mining worlds just have these long shafts. That's what makes them... Ooh. That's mean. That's what makes the mining worlds. And this goo, I'm calling it. Internally, I think it's called goo. I don't know if they're mining oil or fancy space stuff. Check out that sneaky fuel. Um, anyway, this is all that they look like, right? So we want them to look fancy. They should have, like, pipes coming off the side of the walls. And, you know, the little little decorations I was showing you should be, like, chilling out inside the uh, rooms here. Give that power up. Now I'm, it's so easy to start playing. Um... So those are the sorts of things that we're going to add. Okay, now that we always have mining worlds using my fancy new force level type, I should just add, like, in the future I probably will, I'll just add some sort of crazy class, you know, like, yes, thank you, public class debugging values or, you know, and give a bump. But we're, I'm not going to do that now. I only have these two. It's fine. And this is not really debugging. I really need to change that name at some point. But it says debug mode in the game. Whatever. Good. This was an awesome solution. I don't know if that's the sort of thing you wanted to see. Maybe that's the sort of thing you find super interesting. I have no idea. Let us start adding things to on the left here. I think, do I have, yeah, I can press control to make the mouse do this thing. Good. So that'll hopefully, I should remember to do that to let you guys know where I'm thinking and looking. Um, but let me find the planets level planets. So I have kept, I don't know how many people do this, I have kept a tree structure to represent inheritance. Um, and I'm really glad that this language does not, I mean, yeah, you, yeah multiple inherit multiple inheritance drives me crazy. I don't do it, um, because that would ruin my beautiful tree structure. Um, uh, they, and they, most languages don't, but they add weird ways you can do it. Like, what's a new thing in PHP? Uh, not attributes. There's a name for it. There's a funny new thing that you can give you can give classes in PHP that basically makes it multiple inheritance and just makes your life worse. It has at least at work. We started using it because you, you can't tell it makes that blah. multiple inheritance is bad. Anyway, so I organize my classes. All the planets derive from the planet class. All the you know and and all these levels. Probably I should call that levels instead of level, but whatever. Um, 
So all the things, okay, bullets, creatures, and pickups are all things, and those have their base classes here, but what are all the bullet types? Here they all are. What are all the pickups? Here they all are, creatures, etc. Oh, there's different kinds of creatures, enemies. Oh, there's different kind of enemies, many bosses. Ah! I find this is a useful way to structure things for me. The only problem with Visual Studio, and I love Visual Studio, and by the way, I'll probably need to buy the pro version once I start selling on Steam, um, which I'm surprised they give you a free version. This, this is an amazing piece of software, and I'm like motioning at my monitor like to, to capture this window with my hands. I, I like Visual Studio. It's, I mean, all IDEs are wonderful, and this is an IDE, and it's not terrible, so therefore it's wonderful. Um, anyway, it, it, it likes to, um, Visual Studio, one of the things that I don't like is when you put things in folders, it wants to do that for the namespace. So it would be like, oh, planet, that's in, you know, universe level. So it would try to do the namespaces like that, and I don't want that. I, everything in Mysterious Space is fine. Um, but anyway, that's easy. You know, you just delete like I just did, and then you're done. So it's a small price to pay. Um, anyway, I don't. I doubt that's common based on the fact that Visual Studio is like, no, this is the way you would use folders. It clearly has its own ideas that are different from the way I've chosen to use it. But anyway, I find that this is a useful way because I, I can always find, you know, I know what I'm looking for. It's like, oh, I mean, universe is kind of a cheating thing. Um, but I wanted to keep it separate from the other things. I don't know, but universe is where most of this, the game stuff is. These things I could conceivably use in other projects? Not really. I mean, the language things wouldn't make sense because it has so much game-dependent stuff. Um, but, you know, they're more separate in a way from the, the game universe items. So, anyway, uh, rambling again. Yeah, we don't need the color util. We don't need planet. We don't need barren world. Did I not... Just close everything. I know there's a faster way to do that, but holding down Control W is pretty fast. <laughs> Mining world. So we need to add beautiful decorations and pipes. So generate ground, create mines. I think there's like add decorations, add decorations. So this is where I would start adding other things. So cave, I think, in case you're wondering. So this adds the caves doesn't refer to carving out the tunnels, that's handled separately. The decorations for the caves are the stalactites and stalagmites. Um, and so it, it adds those. Um, but only sometimes. Within a radius. So it like picks a spot, does a circle, and kind of randomly scatters in stalactites and stalagmites. And that's how caves are made in the game. Um, anyway, adding rocks. Rocks are rocks, obviously. Now we're going to need to add pipes. So the number of pipes should be relative to the number of bases. I don't know if I keep that somewhere. It can probably, well, no it does. Because, well, we could have like super piped up. Let's, let's, let's just pick a, well, no, there is something. There is something for carving these, these shafts. If, if you want to, I have to find a less, uh, phallic name. <laughs> um, uh, carve hole is apparently what I decided to call it. But where is create mines? Right, and it kind of goes over. Uh, yeah, it's spaced out funny. So basically, it's the width of the level divided by eighty-ish. Minus fifty-five divided by eighty. Sure. So int um. We'll we'll say uh shafts equals. With minus was it, 55 divided by 80, so there should be that many shafts in the in the game. This is kind of, but see, this is a problem because now if I ever change that, it's going to change. It's going to change. Um, if I change this and the other one changes, and we don't know. Um. Shaft count. Well, you know what? Yeah, let's do it that way. Let's just do it that way. Private int um, mine. We'll just call it mine. Mine counts. Good. Starts at zero. Every time we add a new base, then mine counts or mine count. I guess it should just be mine count. Go up. Do it. Make it so, as they say, and then wherever. Where is that add decorations? There we go. Okay, so. Uh, pipes equals, or pipe count equals mine count time. So for each mine, let's say we want to have about three pipes, two to three pipes. Um, we could actually do that. So five divided by two, that would be two and a half. 
Sure. Two and a half pipes per mine shaft. Good enough. We don't know where the mine shafts are located, although it does keep that at one point. But I think base locations add. It just keeps it within this one. That would be a better thing to do. What, what does? It, uh, let me see where it keeps that. Yeah, that would be a better thing to do. Okay, let's let's do that instead. Um, base locations. I don't know. For some reason, I like my private variables to be. This is also old school. This is from like. C++ days. All right, base locations. It builds those up, it's fine. And then equals base locations count. All right, so you know what? Then we don't even need to do this anymore. Everything changes, great. All right, for each, I think that was, did it say, whoops? Location int or coordinate int. So what I'm going to do, let me explain what I'm thinking. That will help. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go, and I always get this confused because I do PHP and Twig so much, and everything has its own way of doing for each. As I just get the languages confused. But anyway, in base locations, I believe that's that's right. Assuming that is yes, coordinate in. So we're going to go through through every base, and at each base, add two to three pipes. So we now have a coordinate for I believe the base of the base. <laughs> Um, like the the ground, it doesn't matter because we'll just do a radius and it'll be. F it does matter because we don't want to put any. No, we can put some in the tunnels behind below. Yeah, so maybe we'll do more. Okay, so let's do a pipe count equals from anywhere from three to five of them. So RNG it randomly generates the level. But you can come back to the same level, and obviously it needs to generate it the same way. So every level has its own random seed. I mean, if you've ever dealt with random numbers, you know that the computer is not that random. So that's what's going on here. Every level has its own random number generator, uh, and I make sure to use that same one so that the level is generated the same time every time, even though it's generated randomly. It's a weird way. It's an interesting way to store data. Um, it doesn't store the level. Once you leave the level, it's like, okay, done, deleted. It just trashes everything and rebuilds it every time, but rebuilds it the same from a single number. It's kind of cool that you can get away with that. Um, I know that people have tried to do crazy compression things with that. Like, you know, with the right algorithm and the right number, can you generate the Mona Lisa with nothing more than, like, the number and that algorithm? Because that would be a lot smaller than holding the whole JPEG, especially depending on the res you know, weird things like that. I don't think anyone's figured out how to do that. Um, but let's, uh, <laughs> enough rambling about weird things. So uh, I guess I'm just going to pick random points within a space around the mineshaft, find ones we need points that are touching those solid gray squares we saw. So maybe it's kind of interesting. So, okay, hold on. This, well, I need to know what this coordinate is. Like, let's, let's, let's think of this a different way. Let's do it where there's a two-thirds chance that it does a random pipe or a, a horizontal pipe going, like, along the roof. Or maybe somewhere in the um, in the in the thing below, the uh, the little shaft below. So the next three, if it's zero, or if it's not zero, we want a two-thirds chance to draw. This will be the vertical pipe um, along roof of you know that that the mine the mine building. So the coordinate here should be something specific to the base. So let me find out what that is. And again, I'm touching the monitor. I should, I, every time I want to do that, I should just touch control instead, because that'll show you what I'm <laughs> actually trying to indicate. So what you talking about? Does not exist. Pretty sure it does. Oh, no, you're right. It doesn't. <laughs> Computer knows best. Um, coordinate start point outpost base place outpost above start point coordinate well what's what's that the coordinate of equals the surface y yeah so that is the middle bottom of the of the base so the floor of the of the building in the center right above where the pipe is placed basically that is where that's what's going into our array or our list 
of base locations is the is the bottom center of the base. It'd be nice if that was conveyed in the name, but it's not, and I don't know how to do so succinctly. You could add an annotation or something. It's fine. So, cool. So, we don't know the width of it, but we'll figure it out. It'll be easy enough. So, I want to go up from that location until I find, so, okay, y equals, let's not do that right, well, we could do it inside the for loop. Sure. Um, y equals find, uh, what do we want to call it? Like, so what, what I want to do is I'm going to write a little function that goes up and finds the space just before the roof, basically. So find empty, find, uh, I don't know what you want to call that. Top of room, top of room, I guess. Uh, from this location, it will find the y coordinate, find top of room y. Uh, we'll write that function later. And then we want, whoops. All right, we don't have an x variable, that's y. Also, so we should just do that. Okay, so instead we should do a coordinate. Coordinate int, uh, top left. Top left will be find top left of room. We'll just make a, a function to do that. Um, and then we will draw pipes going across. So let us take a look at the pipe horizontal. So the way that this sprite is broken up, because it's probably not super clear, it is 32 pixels wide and 16 tall. That is the color I want. Thank you. Let me, um, whoops. So if we, you might wonder why they're white. It's because they're going to get tinted. All right, so this is how the sprite sheet is broken up. This is one sprite. This is, or this is, Right, image, 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 image. Um, so I always want to start with this one because it has the little pipe thing on the end, end with this one, but then any of these other ones can be in the middle to add variety to the pipes. And again, sorry, I was clicking any of these in the middle. I wonder if you can actually see that circle when I press control. I don't know if that shows up in the videos. I sure hope so. Anyway, um, those can all go in the middle. So it's actually kind of a funny arrangement of them, isn't it? Maybe we should always have Let's uh, also love fireworks, by the way. Did I already say that? I love fireworks. All right. Um, right. And then, no, I did it wrong. Ugh, let's just cut. Okay. So start, end, and then four middle pieces. That'll be better. And these we do not want to um, be there. And this is the right size, right? Yes. All right, let me re-export this as pipes horizontal. Yep, that's in the right place. Um, good, 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 good. Okay, so we have the beginning, the end. It's a little less clear from looking at the graphic, but that's okay. So the beginning is always zero, the end is always one. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we will get terrain from top left X, top left, y create if null we shouldn't have to i don't think because we're inside the room so it's gonna that terrain space is already going to exist but we'll do it anyway um and let's background no no, no. we want to add decoration yes and it's either gonna be forward or background okay so we need a new decoration oh but we need that's my fault so i need to make a new decoration object for pipes. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Add. And you can see what I was talking about before. So this will be a uh, uh, horizontal horizontal pipe. I s does it, do I really need, I'll do it in two classes. It's fine. Um, horizontal pipe, here's the thing I was saying. It tries to make that the way I don't want. It needs to be serializable so that we can save it. And I don't exactly remember how these work. A sprite index and a color. Yeah, that is all we need. All right, so horizontal pipe. We need a, yes, sprite index. So that would be zero, one, two, you know, whatever. What, what, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five to, to get which of these we want. Um, and then we also want a color. I had to make an, I have one, it doesn't matter. Uh, so that would be the tint. 
and then that uses was it sprite sheet ID? Oh, what? Is that chance or did it guess because I have no idea. All right. And then the sprite index and then the tint. And I think that's really all we need to do. Unless it doesn't work for some reason. What? Oh. That would help. <laughs> You're a decorate. Good. Now it works. Okay. X offset and Y offset. Um, so for the vertical pipes, I would have those. For the horizontal pipes, I will not. So we can leave those alone. Um, and that's true, because we're going to want vertical pipes being either touching on the left side of a wall or the right side of a wall. Those will be different classes. So yeah, we did want these in different classes. Good. Um, and the tint is probably always going to be dark gray. It's fine. Horizontal pipe. Uh, so this is the start. So we decide that's index zero. Um, we should make a pipe color. TBA pipe color. Um, I don't know. We'll do like 160, 160, 160 or something. That will be dark. Uh, no, we probably want it darker. Let's just do. I always want to do like computer numbers. I'm like, ooh, 96 or whatever. Let's just do it. We'll satisfy my weird. <laughs> OCD-ish thing. All right, so that is one horizontal pipe. It wants to know if we want it in the foreground and the background, and that is a very good and fair question. So we're going to have bool is foreground, and then is foreground equals two equals zero. Okay, we want two or false. This is going to be a foreground pipe or background pipe. It's going to appear in front of the player or behind. And that is, there we go, is foreground. So we will keep that because all the pipes need to have that same thing. So then what we would do is we would do for int x equals top left x get terrain x top left y is solid. So wait, okay x starts here while it's not solid okay because we, we want to keep moving across the roof until we hit the opposite wall right so this is going to find the top left of the room it's going to be the empty space in the upper left and i wish i could draw a picture for you it's as if i can or maybe you already know what i'm talking about but we're going to do it anyway so here is what a room looks like roughly boop, boop, boop. Uh, the location we have is right here oh, i want a different color the uh, the base location right is here. What we want to do, so the top left is going to find this point here, and then we're going to keep going across until we find a solid wall. We're going to stop there. We don't want to include that one. We're going to do this. Um, and that needs to be a different pipe, but we're going to draw pipes along that whole top of the roof, right? So that's what's going on here. And there are little door holes as well, but we're not too worried about those. Um, there, now it's pretty. That's what's happening here, in case it wasn't clear. <laughs> so, um, and we're going to have to do a funny extra little logic check to see if the next space is solid, because if it is, we need to draw um, the end, right, which is index 1. Otherwise, we want to draw random ones. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, so, OK, and let's, let's do that first. So if get terrain x plus 1 the top left y, we're using that same y, is solid, then we'll have an index. So we need int sprite index. Here the sprite index would be 1, else the sprite index can be a random number. It can be anywhere from 2 to 5, right, because 0 indexed, and I always like to do the plus 1 to remind myself. I hate that exclusive upper bound. It drives me crazy. I for one of my other games, I made my own like helper class for random numbers, so I could say like I want a random boolean, I want an integer in this range, and no, both values are inclusive. Thank you, um, but whatever, we don't have that right now. It's good if you wanted like if I wanted to do up to the length, it doesn't matter. It, sometimes it's useful to have it in exclusive upper bound. I understand why they did it that way, but a lot of times it's not what I want. So anyway, otherwise we can do a random sprite index. Excellent. Now we get terrain at x top left y. Uh, top left Y. I, I don't need to do this. It will not error. So if this returned a null, because it could, if the if it 
found no terrain there because I had picked empty space, it would return null. And obviously we cannot call add decoration on null. I am super positive <laughs> that it will never ever happen. And I guess if you were going to be really good about things, you would develop a proof for that. But I, the proof is in my mind. It'll be fine. Um, anyway, <laughs> so uh, yes, let's add a decoration. It's going to be a horizontal pipe again. We're going to use the sprite index we've determined. We're going to use the pipe color we've determined. And we're going to use whether or not it's foreground as determined. So now all I have to do is make this method and our thing is good. Like this will work and we should have horizontal pipes along the roofs or it's not even the, it's the ceiling the ceiling because uh, inside of a room it's called a ceiling <laughs> uh, so or along the ceiling of two-thirds of the um along ceiling of two-third two-thirds of the buildings um also, I don't know my horizontal from my vertical, apparently. Also, my left from right. I often get confused. All right, so let's, um, I guess that's private. I should just do protected. You never know. Uh, protected coordinate int. What is that? Find top left of room. Yep, from coordinate int base. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, we can't use base, can we? Um, outpost or we'll say floor. We'll just call that floor. It's fine. It's the center of the floor. Floor center then. Okay, so uh, coordinate int, this would be the top left. And we'll make that new coordinate int and we're going to start with floor center. I think I can do that. Yeah, okay. I made that class, so I'm sure that similar classes are provided, but it was so easy to just make my own coordinate class. I just went ahead and did it. Um, anyway, so while, okay, let's actually do this different. So x, we know that at least we have to go up one. And I don't want this to be in the middle of the floor. I want to make sure that we're not, because I don't know it won't be a floor because we're adding decoration. So it would be safe to not do this. We'll go ahead and do it anyway. So my concern is, I shouldn't have closed that picture, um, that if we had a box like this and we were starting from here, what I want to do is say, as long as we're not at solid ground, keep moving up. But if we start in solid ground, that would be a problem. So I was like, well, we should do minus one and start you know, from here and then move up so that we don't hit the ground. Uh, that's not going to be a problem. We're adding decorations, so the shafts will have already been been carved out. So it's actually not going to be a problem, but I don't know. We know that it's not... We know that the ceiling is not the floor, so we might as well go one up anyway, if that makes sense. I'm going to leave this up because I don't know if I'm going to need it again. Our little mock um, mining shaft, so in case I want to illustrate to you guys again. All right, so while... Um, get terrain... In case you're wondering, because it's making suggestions the ones that end in at this is a convention that you know you wouldn't know unless you were in my brain that's for a pixel perfect location um which is used for all like the collision detection and everything else real x real y right is the name of the of the variables there whereas this is a a, a tile coordinate if that makes sense the, this is pixel perfect this is tile only only as perfect as tile which is what we want for most things it's really only the collision stuff that uses the the pixel perfect um so anyway top left x top left y is solid or while sorry it's n okay so while the above one do they have until no okay so while the spot just above you is not solid top left y minus minus and then while the space just to your left is not solid. We subtract the x, return top left. All right, that makes sense. So we start from we start from here. While the above space is not solid, we go up. The above space still isn't solid. Above space, oh, okay. While the space to the left is not solid, not solid, not solid. Okay, now we have found the top left of the room. That is the ridiculous method I'm using. It's not ridiculous. It's going to work fine. It's going to be great. And this might actually work. So. 
Finally, let's run the game and see if we have like a little pipe. How long has this video been going? How long has it taken me to get to this point? I mean, I'm talking at the same time, so. Anyway, uh, none of those will do. I don't know why I called it two. And two thirds of our mining shafts. Hey, look, it's a pipe. It looks bad because, oh, and the pipe's in front of me, good. It looks bad because the train behind is getting smoothed, <laughs> which is making it look rough. Um, so let's fix that, but this is like really and truly worked. I think also I want it to be a darker color. So this was good to see. So I don't actually want to save because it would just reload that exact same thing. Um, hmm, I received some sort of text message. Ah, it's about cats. Uh, from a friend about her cat. All right. So let's go back to the mining world and we'll fix a couple of things. So the first thing we want to fix is we want a darker color. Let's make it a third the brightness. It'll be awfully dark. I was really imagining them being all silhouetted and I actually kind of considered making the whole mining worlds just be silhouette worlds and make everything be black and your ship could, you know, it, the shield could glow but you would be black. and That would be harder though. Um, I don't know. And actually now that I think of it, so I, there was a game I made a long time ago where I had a bunch of industrial stuff. I was doing a platformer game in Game Maker. Um, I don't even know. Do I still have like the wallpaper on my desk? You can see my desktop is a mess. Um, yeah, this. So this is what the game looked like. You were a little person jumping, and I had silhouette pipes. And so when I was making pipes, I was thinking of exactly this. Uh, and I was making it in Game Maker. Um, I don't know, I never got, I didn't get terribly far on it, but I made this wallpaper that I was using for a while because I thought that was fun. Uh, anyway, so this is what I was, when I started to make pipes, I pictured this, and, and so the silhouette uh, uh, style, aesthetic, whatever you want to say, um, came to me. That was so long ago, I'm surprised it's still on my, this is how much of a mess my desktop is. <laughs> this is still here after all this time. Something, something, something night. Uh, probably some open source or uh, public domain song. Anyway. Got some mysterious space things. Anyway, so, uh, but I was just now thinking, wrong wrong window, um, in the Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze or whatever for the Wii U, they had a couple levels that had a silhouette effect that was really cool. Um, but it's hard like, to, to identify things. It would make the levels even harder. Anyway, so I'm not going to quite go that route now, but it's definitely a thing to consider for the future. It would be cool to have levels that just have totally different aesthetics. That could be a lot of fun. Um, and if I could really wrap my head around pixel shaders, uh, which Mono Game does support, even for, for the 2D sprites and stuff, that could work really well um, to kind of handle a lot of that automatically. But pixel shaders, they're weird. They're weird. I just haven't dealt with them much, so uh, I, I can't tell you about them much. I did figure out, I basically had to like copy-paste, but I once got a pixel shader for making things when they take damage blink white. In the previous game, I used a pixel shader for that. In this game, I have just another sprite. Like, I didn't even do the pixel shader thing again, because I was like, nah, it's too hard. I would rather just <laughs> make more sprites. So that's bad. At some point, I should go in and, and, and do that with, with pixel shaders. Um, but anyway, enough of that. Let's make it not smooth out that background terrain. And it's not supposed to. It's supposed to already be fixed. And I just waggled my finger like the most sassy thing ever. I don't know why I would do that. <laughs> um, but let's see where, when it creates those buildings, create mine, carve hole, get first solid. Where is a... Uh... It's not carve hole. That's to carve the hole be below. Generate ground, uh, create mines, carve shaft. It's supposed to place a building. Place outpost above. Here we go. Place outpost. That's the method we want. Can be sloped equals false. So that's what's supposed to prevent it. So that's what prevents the walls. Uh, set background. We want something that's like background can be smoothed false. And we only want it for the top. I think it's fine at the doorways, probably. <laughs> thinky, thinky. So build the base and ceiling. That's when we would do it. Set terrain for the floor, set terrain for the ceiling. But it's actually the inside. Is it? Let's, 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 let's. I'm not, I know I'm not explaining things fully, and uh, sorry about that. Um, 
So this can be sloped variable. It's kind of, I feel like it's kind of stupid to generate this now. So the problem is, that's not a problem, it's beautiful. After it generates the terrain, when it first builds the terrain, it does it all blocky. It's, it's all solid blocks. And then afterwards, it goes through and randomly puts in all the little slopes and smooths things out. The problem with that approach is sometimes you want the blocks to be blocky, like in the case of these buildings. I had it at a time where it was smoothing like the edges, sometimes, of the buildings. And it looked really bad. I don't know. It looked ugly and gross, and I didn't like it. Um, so I made a little variable. It's like, hold on. This cannot be sloped um, for terrain. And that's kind of weird to have to store that. Every piece of terrain in the game that you're looking at has this little boolean, can I be sloped? But it's not used. It's not useful, except when it's generating the terrain. So we're kind of taking up more memory than we have to. On the other hand, like, you know, if we were if we were generating this for, a, you know, this game, if this game was for a console as primitive as it looks it's for, that would be a true, like, nightmare. You would not want to use up any more memory than you possibly can. Fortunately, it's the modern day, and we can be wasteful <laughs> in this fashion. So I'm thinking, though, of using this exact same Boolean to prevent it from um, smoothing the background. And I don't know exactly where that's at. Can be sloped. If, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, sloped. So this slopes the terrain, but what smooths the backgrounds? Then it removes, no, that's probably fine. What's making it smooth the background? Something is smoothing the background. Apparently it's not smooth terrain. Smooth background, ah, when do you get called? Well, that's fine. So let's say, um, let's just try it out and we'll see what the effect is. And T, what is that? Smooth can can be sloped. Okay, and not, okay. And it can be sloped. Yes. Then we will try sloping. Let's just see if that works. That might be honestly all we need to, to do. And I had just neglected to do that in the beginning. So mining. Let's check it out. And let's see. And I made the pipes darker. No, look, it's still... um. It's still a jaggy top. Why is it a jaggy top? Oops. Ah, I cannot click. Okay. <laughs> Smooth background and T can be sloped. The background sprite index is five? I don't know what that means. This doesn't get overridden. Hmm. Hmm. Then it sets it, yeah. All right, this was a mess. I should have done this differently. I remember this now, but I didn't. Um, I, I can show you about, uh, you know, whatever. This is another place where, like, the first time I made a beautiful, wonderful decision, and the second time I didn't. So this is what the terrain looks like. And it's arranged specifically so that it's a it's a bit mask so it's it's using binary to code this so if the value is zero then that means no edges are open so you have it solid if the value is one only the top is open two okay three is a combination of one and two because binary so these two sides are open four is just the bottom and so it's binary one two three four and then all the combinations and again i'm touching the monitor and so that makes um that's how it that's how it indexes these it just uses a binary value of which sides are open and then you turn that into an integer whatever counting 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and that's how you get the, the index for the slopes for the backgrounds for some stupid reason i decided to arrange them visually so it makes sense so in my mind as i because because as i was building this i wanted to make sure that it tiled properly and everything else so but the what i need to do is take these apart and rearrange them to use the same sort of logic but i didn't so you know 0 should not be this it should be that and then one wouldn't be that it would be this and it's all different and so because i arranged it stupidly i have to turn i take i make a binary value here you can see me doing that here one two four eight adding them up but then i have to convert those into sprite indexes <laughs> and so that was just like extra logic that was stupid and i didn't need to do i received another text message and i'm hoping that i actually have friends coming over kind of soon we might be a smidgen like they say all right, uh, let me know when you are near. I need to go out and meet them because they've never been here before. We're going to play a wonderful nerdy board game. Um, 
I didn't expect it to take this long. It's apparently been like an hour. Anyway, so that's what's happening with the with that's why there's this like horrible uh, thing of terrain. So again, sometimes I do things in a wonderful good way that is based on experience and you know, I've done a thing like this before for a totally different game and then for some stupid reason I why did I do that? I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. It is what it is, as they say. Uh, you know, the only reason I'm saying that is uh, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's YouTube. YouTube videos, watching people on YouTube, and some guy says that all the time. And now it's in my brain. What else does he say? It doesn't matter. Um, so, yes. So it's smoothing the backgrounds, which we do not want. If it, five, which is, right, so that's the center. So that's why it's saying if it's five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. If it's this solid thing, okay. And there's no liquid here. And the terrain can be sloped, and that's what should be saving us. And if it's not, then that must mean that when it builds the outpost, it can be sloped is false. Hmm. Inside remove terrain. Inside remove terrain. Is that why? If inside is solid, I am honestly not. It's harder to think about these things when you're when when I feel like I'm being watched. I, I do feel a little self-conscious. I don't 100% know if this is what's the cause is, but we're gonna try it, and it might be. And I could sit down and stare at it and and think about it. Um, but then I feel like I'm being quiet, and I already was being quiet, and I don't want to be quiet while you're watching, because you probably don't want that. I don't know. So I start to feel self-conscious, and then I can't think properly. But let's see. No, it's still, it's still a problem. Stop that. Don't shoot me. We do have the pipes. The pipes keep being in front of me. Is that... I did, I did make that random, right? It's supposed to be a 50-50 chance. Also, we keep being fortunate in finding, uh, mining shafts that have pipes. This one doesn't. Oh, I shouldn't complain. It's making testing much easier. Um... Yeah, so so that wasn't that wasn't the reason. Uh, yeah, I know. Whenever I quit, it hasn't quite quit. It's got these locks. Like, oh, you can't edit it. I'm still running this. Why you can't edit the source code while I'm running the binary? I. Anyway, ah, there we go. All right. Then remove the terrain. And you're like, why'd you remove those curly braces? You just needed them. That's why you should always leave them. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. No one wants curly braces. The bullshit. Um, <laughs> Cami slopes false. Cami slopes false. Cami slopes false. Is solid is true, it can be sloped is false. If inside where it sets the background, if it's solid, then we remove it, right? So that's that's because it might place the building on a slope and it needs to clear out the terrain um, to make that not so. I this is just one of those times. You know what? This is one of those times where I pause and I figure this out and you don't have to watch me. So let me find it's not that window. Yes, I'm going to pause, and I will be right back once I have figured this out. Okay, guys, I was being really stupid. I was close. So the problem is, if we look at this carefully, as I should have done, this is saying, okay, so so we're, we're going through the whys, um, above, starting from above the, um, here, where's that picture I made? So the, the algorithm for making the room starts from like somewhere up here and it makes sure that this is all clear because I want to make sure there's enough space for you to get in and it also clears up the sides. But anyway, it goes inside and says, okay, never mind the roof and the ceiling, we've taken care of those already, but let's go across here and it says, okay, if, and this is what this part is, if the x is the center x minus the width divided by two, so if it's the left wall, then we're going to put a wall, else, and, and we're going to say we can't slope. Else, so for example, if we're right here, which is along the top where we don't want things to be smoothed, says, okay, if that's already solid, then we'll get rid of it. And in that case, this is never going to be solid, but it's possible that we built this thing on a slope like this or something, although the floor would line up. Anyway, this is an exaggerated thing. The floor would actually line up. So anyway, so that's why it's saying, okay, if it's solid, where I'm looking and we're inside, we need to clear it. And so I added the, okay, if we clear it, then make it non-sloped. But again, up here, sorry, I'm drawing with white. Up here, that's never going to be the case. So, and, and that is where, and that's what, sorry, this part right here is. If the inside is solid, then remove the train. And that's where I added, make it so it can't be sloped. I just need to make all of it say it cannot be sloped. Nothing inside can be sloped. It doesn't matter. This was only catching the edges. This was only the catching the insides that were solid. 
this is going to catch everything. So I was really stupid. And it's possible that you were watching and you noticed that. Fortunately, it only took me two minutes to figure it out. So that's not too embarrassing. I had to, I, I went back and looked at the smoothing train code and I was like, is something wrong here? What's going on? Anyway, so let's check this out. And I'm going to be super happy if I have a pipe. No, well, okay, not sloped. And we can see that this isn't sloped. And I worry about that because... I, I, I worry that that's going to make it hard to um, tell that you can go through, you know, the terrain. So it's possible. Actually, let's just fix that now. So we already know how we're finding the walls. So let's do this. Can be sloped is false. But not... Okay. So if you're on the edge on the left or right wall, as we just discovered, which will include the door here, I believe, the door on the left and right, um, then we will not set can be sloped to false. Otherwise, for all other insides, things will set them to can be sloped. Also, if it's solid, we'll remove the terrain to make sure we hollow out any, any space. All right, super sweet. I did not mean to minimize that. I meant to click start. That's a very strange confusion to make. <laughs> Let's go. Also, let me center this a little better for you. Pipes, please? Ah, I failed. Well, let's find, let's check out the pipes. This music is good too. It is good, but it's too energetic. Um, no, no pipes here. And <laughs> now the problem will be that I'll, I'll never see the pipes. Yeah, pipes. All right, we got, we got pipes, and we can see it's got the proper ends on the left and right. These pipes happen to be in front of me again, as they apparently always are. And now I have added a single type of pipe and, like, nothing else, which was a lot of work. Again, I feel like the talking does make me a little slower. I swear it's not my fault. I'm, I'm better than this, you guys. I don't know. I am. I'm just making excuses. Who knows how long it would have taken me otherwise. Um, but I have horizontal pipes, and that is the first step. So, obviously, we're going to want more things than that. Uh, I could do different colors. There's no reason why the pipes couldn't sometimes be, I don't know, white or red. Um, let's go ahead and make that possible. Because more decorations, more decorations, more decorations is more better. So let's find the pipes. And then if I had more time, if I didn't have people coming over in like five, ten minutes, I would go ahead and start adding the uh, angled pipes. But, oh well. So let's do um, RGBA, no. We'll do this back. Ah, I've done something crazy. All right, we will do um, possible pipe colors. Pick one. And pick one is a method I made. You can make extension methods. I find this to be super helpful. So I want to show you this because you might find this helpful as well if you do any C sharp coding. You can make your own extensions to classes. So you make a static class. I don't, I don't know why this is how it is. Like, this is some C-sharp voodoo. But this method, because it's static, will apply itself to any sort of list that, that you make. It's, it, and this is the magic, because I don't pass that, right? I called it empty. But on any list, I'm pointing with my finger again, on any list, I can call pick one, and it will call this method passing in the list magically. Again, it's weird C-sharp voodoo. So I've made this pick one method, and I was I found online how you can do this kind of stuff. And it picks a random item from the list. Now we may notice, actually, so this might be bad in this case, it uses my global random number generator. So that would change the color of the pipes every time we... Uh, and so that means I'm glad I looked. It would change the color of the pipes every time you visited, because it wouldn't be using the same random number generator as we were talking about before. But So let's make the RGBA uh, public static RGBA uh, possible pipe colors. Um, so this is going to be a list of all the, all the possible pipe colors. It would be great. It would be awesome. Everyone will love it. Even though I don't usually like... I forget what the name of the style is. I really like when curly braces are on the next line. But Anyway, for these, it seems best this way. So uh, we'll have RGBA. What do we have? We had 30, 30, 32. We'll also do one that's like almost white, sort of gray color. And yeah, red pipes. Those are a thing. Um, red would be... How dark do we want it? I guess we'll try like 192. Like no green, no blue. Red, green, blue. Yep. All right. So where did I... So we don't actually want to do pick one. We want to do RNG next possible pipes. 
length. And this is the sort of thing where I was saying, this time it's useful that the upper bound is exclusive. I mean, this would be the long way to write it. From 0 to the length, but minus 1, because 0 index, we don't, you know, again, if you know coding, then that makes sense to you. All right, if you don't know coding, I don't know why you're watching this. <laughs> Maybe you want to learn, I don't know. I'm, I don't know why people would want to watch this. Again, this is an experiment. If this was, like, super boring, would you please tell me so that I don't make any more of these and waste my time. <laughs> but if people think it's awesome, then I want to do it. Um, because, again, it's work I'd be doing otherwise. May I'd be really curious to time. Like, am I more efficient on my own? I have to be. Look at me right now. I'm coding nothing. And I'm drawing little pictures for you guys over here. It's fine. This is great. Um, it's making me think things. And, again, explaining has made me realize a thing that I might not have realized otherwise. Wouldn't it be a travesty if every time you visited the same planet, the pipe colors all changed on you? No one would ever notice. I'm not done. We need to quit. This pipe color... No, I am done. That is it. Because we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were already assigning the pipe color from a variable. I thought that I had the fixed value there. I forgot that I had a variable before. Good. So let's see if we have different pipe colors. And let's see if the red is... I mean, the white's going to be so bright, like PVC piping. They're fine. There. All right. Get this exciting music that you can't hear. You should turn it up so you can. No pipes. I like that some... I don't know why this sometimes happens. I made sure that it always fills up the uh, bottom with goo. And it's not even when it's open on the top like this, but just sometimes for some reason... It's probably because, you know what it honestly is? Where's my mouse? I can't see it over this. That space just above me that's solid, it probably happens to just try to fill the goo starting from that point, and there's terrain there. And so it's not, it's f failing to fill in anything with goo, because it's, oh, solid, I'm done with my flood fill, which is all it's using, a, a weird flood fill that never goes up. Um, yeah, but so sometimes you get them, then they're never filled with goo, and at first it's like, ah, it's a bug, and I was like, wait. Some of them are empty. That's fine. So now, because of, like, a, it's a bug, but we're leaving it. So there's a red pipe. Oh, that doesn't look good. If, like, parts of it were red, that would be acceptable. Also, did it... What happened to that top? Look at that. Why is it... Like, that pipe has gone crazy. Um, I bet it's drawing two pipes on the upper left. Anyway, I don't like that red. I don't like that red. It's bad. Let's do different shades of... Or maybe if it was a reddish gray. We could do that. So if we did, like... Uh, yeah, I know, you're still running in air, like the strongest air quotes I can manage without you seeing my fingers. All right, 64. We'll make it like a reddish gray, and that might be okay. Um, probably should have waited to see what white would look like. Type color, let's just find that. There we go. Um, so I think... Yeah, we need to start from X plus 1, right? Because we already added the the pipe up there, so... Let me see, that was a text message. It might have been from my friends. Close-ish. Going to go check out our apartment real quick. See you at the stop. Okay. They're, the, they're actually, like, moving in right across the street from me, which is pretty cool. Um, but they're not there yet. So, anyway, let's go check out these pipes, and then I need to head out, and I will upload this video at a slightly later time. Whee! This was all very haphazard. And if people like this... <laughs> Except for, like, the things I did poorly. Let me know about, you know, I can I can do better next time. Like, not do this when I have know I have people coming over. That was perhaps not the best choice. Um, looks like the pipe is good here. Let's see if we can find another one by chance. Oh, wait. Enemy guy. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, if people like this except for some little bits, then I'll try and fix those bits. I certainly don't want to bug you guys with my crazy nonsense. This is another bug that sometimes happens. I just noticed it. Um... All right. Sometimes it carves a tunnel, but then when it goes to place the structure, that's the space it found. That is a legitimate bug that needs fixing. Also, look, because it's underground, it put, like, cave inside of our structure. I haven't seen it this bad before, though, where there's an empty space, so that's real exciting. You've discovered a bug in the game. This is, if you download 6.5 now, this is what your mining world could be like. So that's interesting. Um, anyway, good. Horizontal pipes. It took us a while to get there, but we got there. And hopefully you learned a little something along the way. Hopefully this was interesting to you. If not, I apologize profusely and let me know. Uh, I'm going to call it quits here. Um, I really thought I was going to get through more pipes, but we only got through those pipes. But you can see, hopefully, how the rest will go. It's a similar sort of thing. Find the structures. We have now those base locations, so I can 
we can, you know, here's O finding different places within the rooms, whatever, and then I'll put in more decorations, make sure there's floor underneath, blah, blah, blah. Add funny mechanical bits. It'll be great. I could even, I don't know if they should be animated or not, because I really feel that this is an abandoned mine. But anyway, I would also like to add power lines strung up across the level. It doesn't matter. I am quite done. I need to go out and meet my friends. Thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting. If you've watched this far, I, then I really hope it was interesting. Otherwise, you have made yourself suffer for like an hour. But thank you very much. And and I also want, thank you, DDR Kirby ISQ. I've already thanked him a billion times, but the music is amazing. And I will probably make a mini release just for these mining worlds uh, to include the new music and the new decorations and apparently some bug fixes. Um, but yeah, so and and, and so thank, thanks for watching. Thanks for him making awesome music. I don't even know if he's going to watch this video. It doesn't matter. And thanks everyone for voting. I got greenlit and I I'd still need to like, you know, form a little legal money making entity, a company of some kind, um, before I, I, I'll feel comfortable doing that. Probably need to buy the pro version of Visual Studio for similar reasons. Um, but it, it, none of this would have been possible without people playing and loving it in, in I mean, yeah, I've done work, you've done your share as well. We've all made this possible and it's awesome. So anyway, thank you. Let me know if this was good or bad or neutral and goodbye. <laughs>